hello friends in this video i will talk about the james webb space telescope it is also known as jwst uh, so you have already seen in the news uh, beautiful images coming from millions of light years apart from the earth so i will describe here the technical aspects of james webb uh, space telescope so to understand the uh, the more details so first you have to understand the electromagnetic spectrum so i will uh, explain here electromagnetic spectrum which consists the visible region visible region basically made of the boilet and the in the lower wavelength and the red uh, in the higher wavelength region then if you go in the further larger in wavelength this is called infrared region then it comes the again in the higher wavelength region if you increase further wavelength then it becomes microwave then it is uh, called radio waves if you increase further increase wavelength then if you further increase the wavelength then it's called long, long radio waves similarly in the lower wavelength in the lowest wavelength in the visible region is the boilet if you go further in the lowest wavelength region then it is called ultraviolet then if you just again further in the lower wavelength then it's x-ray and then gamma rays so uh you have already seen a traffic light it consists the green light and the red light we use the red as a signal for the danger so if light is coming uh if light is traveling in the medium then the scattering intensity depends on the its wavelength it is inversely proportional to the wavelength uh, the fourth power of the wavelength like 1 over lambda is it lambda stands for the wavelength so lambda uh, to keep our four so if you have the larger wavelength then the scattered intensity will be smaller so in the visible region red has the largest wavelength so the scattered intensity for the red will be smaller so red has red is least scattered uh, by the atmospheric particle because of the large wavelength so that's why we, we use the red as a signal for the danger in the traffic lights basically it can go over a larger distance before it's ca it get uh, completely scattered so it so that's why we use a red as a traffic signal so what we learn uh, if we have a larger wavelength it can uh, tra travel basically the more distance uh, if i say in the simple words so if you if you further increase the wavelength then the scattering will be smaller and that means it can travel a longer uh, distance so the infrared has a larger wavelength than the uh, than the red so now the parabolic mirror uh, so parabolic mirror james webb telescope this is the picture of the james webb telescope it consists of parabolic mirror and then we have uh, another mirror which is used for the reflect of the light reflection of the light so what is the importance of the parabolic mirror if you have the spherical mirror if your light is coming like this from the front then you can see that it has multiple focus points it's a focus point is not unique uh, if you have the parabolic mirror then if your light is coming like this collimated light uh, from some source then your focal point will be the unique you have a unique focal point there you can put the your secondary mirror so uh, parabolic mirror basically will focus on the light at a point so light will come from here it will the, all the lights it will include the infrared visible every light will be there so then it will come on this para parabolic mirror and then it will it will ref it will focus all the light to a particular point in this this is basically focal point of the par of the para parabolic mirror and then this mirror will reflect a light again here then there will be some filter there will be a filter that will filter out the visible light and the other light and then it will allow only the infrared light to go to this particular sensor here we will have a sensor that will detect the light basically so now the location of james webb telescope so you have already seen this uh, in many videos you can see it, uh, it so if you just see the, s the distance from the sun to earth it is around 150 million kilometer and where it james wave uh, telescope lies uh, it is lies around l2 point 
so it is basically 1.5 million kilometer away away from the earth so it is basically 100 times uh, smaller than the distance between the earth and the sun so but it is uh, it is very far from the uh, our orbit however Hubble basically works around the five park around 570 kilometer from the earth but it is uh, million kilometer apart from the earth's uh, surface so next slide so telescope technical details so telescope uh, basically covers the different parts of uh, electromagnetic spectrum as i already mentioned so previously there was a hubble as i mentioned in my previous slide hubble worked uh, basically in the uh, an ultraviolet region uh, and then the visible regions and then the near infrared regions basically the closest to the infrared region and uh, the James Webb telescope it works uh, near and the mid infrared regions when I say the near infrared regions it covers the wavelength 0 0.625 micrometer and uh, 5 to 28 micrometer in the mid infrared region so then James Webb telescope as I mentioned uh, previously the light uh, far from the source uh, source will be the galaxies or some stars which is merging very many light years apart, apart. so that light will come uh, and will strike on the parabolic mirror and then the mirror will uh, put key reflect the light at the focus point where we have uh, another secondary mirror and then this mirror will reflect uh, this particular region where we will have a filter and then this uh, we will have here sensor sensors basically made of silicon and the other types of sensor I will mention in the next slide and this particular area should be very cool because here we have a sensor that works at very extremely low temperature uh, and if uh, that basically allows to detect the signals at very extremely low temperature if you have a large temperature then detector will just simply detect the noise nothing else you will see just simply the noise and uh, the other parts you already you can see in other videos like sun seal is to protect uh, to very high temperature and these are the parts basically and then the detector technologies as uh, since i made the uh, i works on detectors as i already mentioned in my previous videos i works on the silicon detectors and other diamond detectors and other types of detectors development so I will talk about the detector technologies so uh, there are two types of sensors uh, is used for the de infrared detectors so one is the mercury cadmium telluride it is also refer abbreviated as HG stands for mercury CD cadmium and then the tel T stands for telluride detectors uh, it is used for the uh, near infrared region basically 0 0.625 micrometer 0 0.6 micrometer if you convert in the terms of energy is 2 electron volt and 5 micrometer is 0 0.24 electron volt and the another types of detectors use is the silicon basically doped with the arsenic it is also abbreviated as silicon arsenic detectors for the uh, mid infrared region basically 5 to 28 micrometers so 5 micrometer is 10 0 0.24 electron volt and 28 micrometer is 10 for uh, if you convert in the energy 44.28 milli electron volt uh, so this particular HG these types of detectors is basically used for the infrared radiation detectors so this in this if you can this this possesses a very specific properties this particular material possesses a because it's a mixture of the several materials uh, so if you tune the percentage of the uh, mercury then you can also change the properties to detect uh, the different uh, uh, regions of the wavelength like uh, if you put the less num less uh, percentage of mercury then it works 0 0.2 to 2.5 micron region and uh, if you put uh, if you just change the composition of the mercury then you can make it work uh, 0 0.6 to 5 micron so this particular material is has a, possesses a very big pro good properties uh, uh, special properties 
so silicon as you know silicon has the band gap of 1.12 electron volt uh, and this energy is very small like 0.24 electron volt if you put a simple silicon uh, it, it will not detect any photons of this energy because it is uh, far less the band gap so the impurity basically mixing with the arsenic will allow to detect uh, the infrared radiation I will talk about in more details in the next slide how it works yes so there are two types of sensors used is called uh, infrared uh, array camera it is also abbreviated IRAC and the mid infrared instrument is known as MIRI uh, basically made of the silicon doped with arsenic impurities so what is the what is the type of uh, sensors basically it is a pixel sensors uh, basically pixel size of uh, micrometer it can be uh, this particular detector uh, is called the hg cdte or it can be silicon doped with arsenic uh, silicon doped with arsenic uh, for different wavelength ranges 5 to 28 micrometer we use this detectors and then mm, 0.625 micrometer region uh, we use this particular detector so light will strike this detector and then this uh, this will produce the uh, electron hole pair and that, that will convert it into the bo uh, voltage and then we have a bump bonding uh, basically is bump bonding and that, that will connect with the uh, readouts uh, integrator circuit uh, so it is basically kind of hybrid sensors we have the detector part as I already mentioned before in my previous video that uh, this types of combination is known as the hybrid sensors so we have a pixel layer on the top and then we have the electronics on the bottom and this is connected by the bumper bonding here it is used as the NEDM interconnects basically for the co connecting the sensor with the chip so Mirai, Mirai instrument uh, the good performance uh, is expected around the very less uh, temperature around 6.4 Kelvin uh, so this, this, uh, this temperature is uh, just a little more uh, than the absolute zero so the if you want to operate this sensor uh, MIRI basically which is stand for uh, basically in the mid infrared region so then you have to operate it at a very low temperature like uh, near absolute zero like uh, 6.4 Kelvin there it will give a good performance so I will summarize uh, this particular slide there so there are two types of sensor one is infrared array it stands for IREC and the another is that uh, mid infrared instrument MIRI uh, basically two types of uh, materials semiconductor materials one is HGCDTE another is silicon doped arsenic now uh, this material HGCDTE I already mentioned in the previous slide uh, you can this is a basically uh, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's a ternary alloy uh, a nearly ideal infrared detector material system it is a so it it is basically ternary alloys it's 1 minus x and x and then te so you can change the x composition uh, a percentage basically of mercury and then the cadmium uh, then you can change the properties uh, to make it work from lower region like for 0 0.26 to 2.5 and 0 0.625 also so this is composition allows to change next thing uh, you can one thing you can notice here uh, that uh, the band gap is typically because you are detecting very uh, low energy so band gap basically typically you can just see a different composition like if you put the x in percentage like 0 0.194 then then you can see that the changes in the band gap again uh, this composition will decide the band gap uh, and that will basically allow to use it at lower energies so doped silicon detector so 
if you use the single silicon detector single basically no doping then you need 1.12 electron volt to create an electron hole pairs that will basically create the signal if you mix with the arsenic if you then it will be n type basically and then that will allow to create an electron hole pairs at uh, 54 milli electron volt energy basically it will uh, so the ionization energy is for different impurities this is the listing of the ionization energy so then it it will the ionization energy for the arsenic in this silicon will be around 54 milli electron volt that will allow to create uh, the electron hole pairs uh, elect that will allow to create the signal in this uh, silicon if uh, mm, by the infrared radiation otherwise you cannot create the signal in the infrared regions uh, if you use the only silicon but uh, the doping with the arsenic makes it basically n type and then the ionization energy of the arsenic uh, basically is 54 milli electron volt that will allow to create the electrons and that we collect as a signal in the sensor so uh, so that that means what dopings basically with the n-type uh, arsenic material allows uh, us to detect the photons of milli electron volt energy and that is basically ult ultimately determines the how, mu how much uh, minimum energy it can detect so next the reconstructed images so you have already seen many beautiful images in the news so one of the images is Spins, Spins, uh, quintet uh, where we compare it is compared between the performance of James Webb telescope versus the Hubble telescope you can just see the clarity of the image in the James Webb telescope and this is the Hubble telescope so we reconstruct uh, these images using the signals on the pixel detectors basically two types of detectors we have the near infrared detectors and the other is uh, mid infrared region where we use silicon doped with the arsenic some of the images basically represent uh, these are representing the uh, some of the objects uh, basically billions of light years apart from the telescope so that means uh, this when some photons are created at this uh, at this object they takes uh, billions of years to travel to the telescope so basically we are seeing this situation the situation here uh, is billions of light years before and uh, this is not the present situation at present uh, i don't know what will be the situation uh, there uh, so next uh, one more thing i want to mention in the previous slide yes on the sensor so silicon with the do arsenic sense pixels basically as i understand here these are not uh, reverse by pn junctions these are simply doped with the arsenic silicon sensors so there's no no creation of pn junction that's why we need very extremely small temperatures so that we can reduce the thermal uh, production of the thermal charge carriers uh, so this is all uh, so then i can all okay thank you very much